I just like when I saw it, I was just like, okay, first of all, I feel like you have to know that every Indian parent is trying <laughs> to get their kids married. Okay. It's I their mean, soul. You goal. Have, it is like their mission in life is to get you <laughs> married. Okay. Okay. Um, and are so, you? <laughs> so, so this poor dude, you know, he is like, I, I looked him up afterwards after you. Oh, he did. Our he's a, I yeah. really hope that he's tweet a, was real from him because it was so good. Yeah. I, I don't know if he made it up. I guess we could all go ask him, but he's like founder and CEO of this company. And <laughs> dude's C working level. so hard. He's like he's like the founder of this thing. And he is like working so hard. He's texting with his mom and he's like, Yeah, I'm working on my Q3 OKRs. And she was like, Okay, are you getting married soon? <laughs> <laughs> OKR and kept it in caps. Oh my I love it. God. What are those? Sweltering. And I mean, I don't want to like put on jeans and go to the office. Why? You know? I'm Leg, just prisons? Leg prisons? Leg prisons. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when we were going to the office, I would like try to find, you know, um, like these really light jeans or pants or whatever. I just spent like hours trying to figure that out. And uh, <laughs> and now I don't have to think about that ever. Ever. Yeah, you have to like try and optimize for comfort and like presentability. Like, mm, I don't actually know that there's a happy medium. It's like <laughs> either you're suffering or you're comfortable. <laughs> and yeah. jeans, yeah. you're suffering. You're suffering. Suff there's, you're suffering. A, there's a lot of suffering with jeans. Jeans, it's yeah. just hot. It's just hot. That's that's what I've like having lived in Texas all of my life. Now I'm just kind of like they're just hot. And if I can if I can just not wear jeans or pants, <laughs> that would be great. Like <laughs> problem solved. I never have to do it again. <laughs> Where, I think, where's I think your that's beer? a good start for happy hour. Oh yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um well welcome to happy hour, everybody, where you can go to happy hour in your sweatpants. I'm a Jay Wagre. With me here is Ira Joe Hall. Hey Ira. Hi. How's it going? It's so good because I am drinking a fancier version of my usually oh, ratchet my cranberry God. and vodka. This wow. is a Saint Germain and Cranberry for those wow. of you who are interested. Saint Germain and Cranberry. I never, that's not a thing that I ever thought to put together, those two things. Elder flower or elderberry. I don't know. Something that's delicious and it's supposed to make me feel like an adult drinking cranberry <laughs> drink. So there you go. Sounds, it sounds very adult and it looks really, really good. So I'm very jealous. And this glassware. I mean, come Look at on. that thing. Look at that thing. That is just Every elegant. Elegant. Everyone get you some fancy glassware to feel put together in your life. That's really nice. I should definitely try to take that advice. Thank you. Thankfully, you know, having a spouse, having uh, my wife has been really good about buying stuff like that. So now I look around the house and I'm like, hmm, I made it. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, Adulthood. she's really made it seem like we're actually adults and uh, and. You know, I'm very, very happy, very happy with that. Um, well, cool. Yeah, today I've got a Pine House Pilsner um, in my Ooh, Dallas, refreshing. my Dallas Pine class. Yes, I think, oh, I think this is where is this from? Um, no, I'm not. I'm doing this live. Why am I doing this live? Why am I trying to <laughs> figure out tiny print on a can? Why am I doing this? That's ridiculous. Okay, well, uh, I'll figure out where it's from, but it's very good. Um, I think it's from Austin, but you know, now I'm going to say it and I'm going to be wrong. So, okay. Good we'll me. edit you out. <laughs> we'll just edit me out. Uh, fine. yeah, it's all good. How was your day? Is it pretty good? Three meetings over eight hours. <sighs> I mean, I'm feeling pretty good. This is now my second cocktail because we started late. Thanks to yeah. you. Uh, so, I had to put a kid I mean, down, I can't come you know? can't complain i don't know about this put, kid life you know it's uh this is party time shout out to the <laughs> uh parents here on the pod uh we all know that once the kids are going to bed it is time to crack open that beer 
<laughs> you know, just watch whatever you want on Netflix, whatever you want, whatever you want. Shut that Disney Plus off and just go nuts. <laughs> watch whatever you Freedom. want. Watch The Northman on Peacock. I'm just like Freedom. a walking advertisement for TV on for parents. <laughs> <laughs> this but is that's our like time. This is our moment. Okay, that's a highlight post post bed baby down. It is you can watch whatever you want in whatever you want with whatever you want to drink. You can Power. have one beer and then be super tired and go to bed. Then you're going to sleep. Whenever you want. <laughs> whenever you want. Between the hours of six and eight thirty PM. That's right. That's right. That is how we do it. That is how you do it. So yes, it is you know, you're tired all the time. You're tired all the time. That's uh, and then, you know, then you have two and you're like, why did I do that? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, uh, you know what? I'm very excited about our topic today. Me We're too. We're going to talk about working with engineers. Our favorite yep. people. The Some builders of, of this people are world. Your yeah. job is very hard. Hey, same, same, same. Some of my favorite people but, are also engineers. And engineers are so unique in what they can deliver and how they deliver. Like, I feel like there's not really a cookie cutter engineer I've encountered in my career. Um, yeah. But there are some principles to working effectively with engineers. We're going to yeah. jump right into that. We should. One thing I will say just quickly before we do that is that, um, you know, I think there's like a stero stereotype of an engineer, uh, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, super nerdy, doesn't talk to anybody, you know, uh, doesn't know how to dress themselves, I guess, and just can't like, you know, can't adult for some reason, uh, just can't exist out in the world for whatever reason. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're like people surprise that like everybody yeah. else, we all have things that we do and quirks that we have and whatever. And engineers are no different. Let's just engineers are people too, era. Yeah. And everybody on this pod engineers are people too all you pms um, listening just ask an engineer what they think a stereotypical pm is and yeah, prepare your yeah. tissue box yeah, just. <laughs> so <laughs> your tissue box just like curl up in a ball and just yeah. like you know sometimes i do i mean i'm sure everybody has done that sometimes. yeah get ready We're to just... learn you too are a cliche <laughs> You're on a Zoom call and you just like got your headphones on. You just curl up in a ball on the floor, just like oh, just God. rock. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fine. It's true. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> We're all fine. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah. Let's do, let's dive into the yeah. Let's dive into working with engineers. Let's go. with that i sent right. it to my my pm friend who was here yesterday the day before yeah i told you she's a pm at instacart she was like oh my god oh yeah she was like i'm in instacart yeah oh it's funny <laughs> she thought it was funny she's like this is funny and well you just wait <laughs> <laughs> i got you we're about to get serious <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk about working with engineers today. Uh, like we talked about, our favorite people. Um, and we've got a few specific bullet points that we're going to walk through. So uh, let's just kind of, let's just going to kick this off. Okay. Um, bullet point number one, this shouldn't be a surprise, but, and if it's a surprise, like, I don't know, we, you might want to think about things a little bit, but <laughs> engineers don't work for you. You work as a team together. This is a team sport. This is not hero ball. You don't get to just tell engineers what to do. Engineers are people. They have great ideas and you should be as, working as a team to uh, take all of your ideas together uh, about executing and, and building a great product and making it happen, making the best ideas happen, no matter who it comes from. So that's that's a really important thing about working with engineers. <laughs> Just because they have a technical degree, they don't have the title of PM, they don't like sit in meetings all day like I did today and just like <laughs> talk about what you could do. Um, doesn't mean they don't have great ideas and great approaches that you should consider. So that's a really important part of working with engineers. Don't forget that. Uh, and, uh, so, okay. So, so second one, second one, 
Uh, in the same vein, brainstorming as a team, you don't have to be the only one with good ideas. Again, you're working with great people. They're very sharp. You don't have to be the only one like sitting and creating ideas. That's a PM's job is to help the team be successful, to execute. You're the you're one of the leaders of the team um, and you have a goal that you need to try to achieve. And in a lot of ways, it's our jobs, right, to get the best out of our teams and uh, and help everybody be successful. And I found that if you try to do this on your own, you're not brainstorming with the team, you're not, you know, uh, getting everybody bought in, working together on goals together. Um, it's just really hard to accomplish your goals. It's way more fun and way, you know, way better, way more effective to work together as a team, right, here. Yeah, couldn't be more right. Actually, I think this is my favorite topic for today's pod. Um, I'm looking forward to describe how many wins I've gotten just by brainstorming as a team, as opposed to ide ideating on my own, my sad little Jira-filled world. <laughs> Mine too. There's, uh, we spend a lot of time in Jira. We, we do. all do. I actually, engineers spend, yeah, I would argue, even more time than we do. At least we get yeah. to look at like things like Figma and Sketch from time to time. Um, yeah, I, I once introduced myself as Ira rhymes with Jira, and then immediately <laughs> no. hated myself after. Immediately, <laughs> immediately was like, whoa, unsubscribe. Wow, <laughs> it was a big Wonderful. setting too. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm just glad you shared that with everybody listening to this podcast. That just makes you me know feel what? They'll remember my name now. What will they like me? Mm. <laughs> TBD, TBD. I love it. So, like, <laughs> I I think if they don't like you, then you know, <laughs> turn it off. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, working as a team. Like, um, what are some of the? I mean, some of the examples here are like. I mean, we should you should be doing this on a regular basis, like every six months at least, every quarter. Um, you got if you plan by half. Or plan by quarter, you should be you should be doing this sort of thing. Some of the best ideas come from engineers. You That's know? right. Like they uh when when they're I mean they're in the code base all the time. When things are messed up in there, they're mm -hmm. looking at it all the time. Okay. When you wrote that story uh a year ago that wasn't well <laughs> thought out. <laughs> right. Finally made it. Finally made it guess, to the top of the backlog. Guess who's gonna look at that? Every time they check code into the code base, <laughs> those wonderful people you work for, uh, work for, yeah, in a lot of ways. Um, and so, you know, they, they have, they have some great ideas on, on, um, what you can fix and something that, that helps a lot, um, is sharing research you have, like sharing early and often just stuff you've learned about how your products work, how other products work, um, with your engineering team so that they can think about that stuff together. Um, it really, really helps kind of get the juices flowing and, and really helps the team brainstorm the best ideas that they can on how to, how to achieve your goals. There's been a lot of times where getting research out to engineering has actually changed the trajectory of the release for me. You know, there, I can, there are countless ahas um, because once you have, you know, eyeballs out outside of, you know, yourself, who's been, writing one pagers, staring at the problem, looking at competitive analysis to get fresh eyes um, and research in front of engineers will raise a lot of issues. Like, is this not only is this feasible, like, can we build this, but is this the right way to go about solving this user problem? So anytime you get research, share it with your entire team everywhere from engineers to designers to key stakeholders. Um, and if you do that in a time frame where you can actually do something with that input, even better, even better. Yeah. And that doesn't just go for PMs. I mean, for all the folks that are listening that are not PMs, maybe you're in marketing, finance, design, whatever, um, you know, stuff you learn, uh, data science, like anybody in data science, you should be sharing stuff with us all the time. Okay. Stop working. Stop building models and just send us stuff because <laughs> <laughs> that stuff is just gold. Even though, you know, half the time 
I don't know what I'm looking at. And somebody has to explain to me like I'm a fifth grader. Um, yeah. That sort of stuff is just so important and so just so helpful. It just it gets your mind turning on things. It gets everybody's mind turning on things that that can be really, really beneficial to the team down the line. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move on to the third one. You want to hear the All third right. one? Let's go. Being data informed. Be data informed. Um, that, I think, is just so important. You know, it's it can be very easy to fall into the trap of just like, just trust me, okay? <laughs> Let's just do this. <laughs> Let's do the story. Oof. Yeah, you're laughing because we've. I've done it. <laughs> have you done it? Have you Have you done that? I, I'm laughing because I did it. I I've done it more than once, and I've paid yeah. both times. <laughs> yeah, it's really not. Um, it's not a pleasant experience, um, especially when like the thing that you want the team to do, and you're just like, I oh, just trust me oftentimes if those words are escaping your mouth to the team, it usually means that either you don't understand why you're doing it <laughs> or, yeah. or, you know, somebody has told you to do it and you don't understand why, you know, which I guess that's a subset of not understanding why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, or you just don't want to have to sit and explain it, which is kind of disrespectful. It's like, just totally you know, everybody you're working with is smart. Like you should spend the time to do it. It's your job. Your job is to communicate. So, um, you know, and none of those reasons are good reasons, you know, <laughs> or you, or your hypothesis, maybe you just don't even believe in your hypothesis that much. Maybe you think like, okay, I'm going to do this thing and we're going to see what happens, but you know, it's, it's a kind of a long shot and, you know, you don't know how it's going to work out. Yeah, I, I, I know that if I'm convinced, um, then it's easier to convince engineers. Um, but I'm generally convinced when the quant comes in and you can marry that with a qual. Um, so it's okay to not have all the data points, but the ones that you do have, share them. Share them when you get them. Um, if you can show a chart or provide... Um, some evidence like in a deck or um, in your sprint ceremonies, for example, like let's say in stand up, um, you learn something new, feel free to share that. That brings people along with, with you. And that's really critical for getting to the right solution um, and not dictating it too early on in the process. Yeah, that's great points. All right, next one, fill in the gaps. What does this mean? Um, to me, it means um, be useful and where mm -hmm. there's gaps in the execution process, don't be afraid to hit, get your hands dirty, jump in the example yeah. that and I there think generally about are. is, um, oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, uh, there's tons of gaps in the process. The team never, uh, it's, it's really rare for a team to figure out everything that has to happen to ship something. Mm -hmm. And so filling in the gaps, um, just, I mean, it just helps you execute it just, and it, it, um, you also want to make sure that the team understands that we're all in this together, like we were talking about earlier. And so mm -hmm. filling in the gaps really just kind of is, is showing and demonstrating to everybody that like, Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm here with you. The example that I come, that comes to mind for me is when we were, um, trying to internationalize some of the mobile apps that we were working on and, uh, translations were hard to come by. Um, and you know, there's, there's lots of demands on translation teams all the time. So yeah. I was like hand translating stuff, you know, wow. uh, just to get the location, uh, the locales that we were working on for those apps out the door. Um, that's honorable and also necessary. Like engineers are doing yeah. heavy lifts. And so, um, if you want to get it over the line, um, you'll take some of those menial tasks and, and pitch in. Translations is a great example, by the way. It always seems like localization is strapped for time. Like, do they ever have bandwidth? I feel like I'm always like, please, please do. And they're like, no, always no. <laughs> Shout out to the localization people listening. The pod, okay, a, we love you. They have a hard we job. We just know that you don't have enough. Yeah, it's hard. It's, and you, you never have enough time. It's really, it's definitely challenging. 
Um, so, so we appreciate all of your hard work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, filling it, just do, you know, do stuff to help the team win. That is, uh, that is part of your job. And, um, that helps you be successful working with, working with engineers. Uh, and finally, uh, you know, it always helps to learn some engineering, like learn what people on your team are doing. Um, it could be in school. Like I learned some of it in school, uh, in, in college. Um, but it can also just be like, you know, find some great videos, find a course that you can take, um, or just like crack open the, the GitHub repo with, of course, in an approved way with like a, <laughs> you know, with an environment that with you're all the, using. Yeah. All the proper permissions in place. So you don't break yeah. anything. For real. And, uh, you know, learn some engineering, try to figure out how to, how to create a PR, check in some code. I mean, it's. It's it looks scarier than it really is, and um, you know you'll not only buy yourself some credibility, uh, but you'll also know what it takes to build build products and learn how to you know learn how to do this, and uh, it'll give you some respect for uh, for how difficult uh, engineering projects and engineering work is. It will help you scope too. I mean, uh, obviously yeah. you're not going to code as fast as the engineers with, uh, the little course you take there, but, um, <laughs> it will help you, it will help you build empathy if nothing else. Um, and that will help you understand like, Hey, like, is this big, medium, small, you'll start to respect t-shirt sizing a little bit oh, more has yeah. been my experience. That's a great, that's a great point. Like you really when you get in there and you start trying to do it yourself, you're like, okay, yeah, this, I get why this is an X, 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 L, you know, uh, yeah. when they say that they mean it, mm -hmm. <laughs> they definitely mean it. All right. So I think the next point is a good one. Um, and I think, uh, one that kind of goes well with your earlier point, but it's to learn the stack that the engineers use in your specific team or org. Uh, that's really important because once you understand the tech stack, just even if you read the pitch pages on like, what is React? What is GraphQL? Um, those little nuggets can help you understand the challenges or maybe efficiencies that can be gained um, building your product. Um, and there are a lot of resources out there. I, I know that initially when I started out in my career, I was super intimidated um, by not knowing some of the jargon. Um, just even like you hear a name drop that you don't know, look it up, take a look, see what it's supposed to do, see what efficiencies it's supposed to bring for engineers. Um, and that in itself will familiar, familiarize yourself, allow you to be more familiar um, with what engineers are doing day to day. Um, and, and I think that's just like being a good, that's just like being a good partner. You know, I know you're yeah. married, AJ. Like if you can understand what your spouse or partner is talking about, even at some surface level, it's going to help uh, move conversations along um, when they're blocked um, and they're explaining something technical um, and you have a base level understanding of that. Um, it's going to help you feel more connected to your team. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm thinking of a, a time where this didn't go well. Um, I was a PM for our native app team and we had native app engine or uh, native app product managers and web product managers. And then there was native app teams and web teams. And we were trying out a new model where native teams and web teams would work together on different projects. Um, hmm. So instead of it, you know, instead of two separate projects happening for the same thing on different platforms, we try to do them in one pod. And, um, you know, as the native PMs uh, working on native apps, you tend to learn that those platforms, iOS, Android, very, very different than web platforms. You know, it's a different, different type of development cadence, different methodology, different technologies, different things you have to be concerned about uh, than when you're on the web platform. And uh, when we started cross pollinating, man, you would hear things from PMs just being like, yeah, well, it works this way on the web. And you're just like, oh, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> or just uh, like the native PMs would be like, well, on iOS, we do it this way. And it's like, oh, 
<laughs> just like you gotta go learn how things are built in the platforms that you're working on the stacks that you're working in and you know have some respect for the process and understand that these things are different and that what you're trying to do is just different depending on which platform you're on and sometimes the bigger the project the you know more diverse the technologies and stacks that are, are going to be present right so if you have like a multi-touch product um, it's more likely that you'll have engineers that need to communicate with each other and understand each other's stack um, but you'll have more blockers you'll have more unknown unknowns and being familiar um, with the processes and stacks of each respective team will give you the opportunity to get ahead of potential conflicts even when you're just having scoping discussions like like ajay and i are talking a lot about like oh like while you're building but doing some of these steps beforehand might change like i said earlier the shape the scope the cadence at which you build uh, and it could basically illuminate a lot of gotchas, which is great. You know, we're always trying to de-risk. Um, so taking the extra 20 minutes to look up that term, to understand that technology, it should pay you back. Yeah, you can really save yourself a lot of headache. That's for sure. Right. And there are certain things that just can't work on platforms that you're working on, different yeah. parts of the stack that you're trying to do. And uh, you just, you, you know, being aware will save you a lot of time, headache and you know, um, definitely, definitely help your engineering team out. Well, that brings me to our next point, um, which is also around understanding engineering, but understanding the level of the engineers who are working on your team. This can really help you plan effectively. So I think, you know, you, you join a new team and you're trying to get a sense for like, Hey, am I working with senior engineers, new grads, are there interns in my, my team? Um, that's not really like to belittle anyone. It's it's actually that different skills at different skill levels may have different interests. And once you know that, you can position those engineers um, in projects um, that would allow them to lean into those. Like for example, new grads generally like to work on new technology or uh, in my experience, like try the hottest, newest X. Um, and so knowing that le the level of the engineers and where their interests lie um, can help you and the engineering manager kind of plot out like, hey, I think this would be a good project for X engineer. Also, you know, the inv investing that time early on again will give you the opportunity to kind of like say like, hey, like I, I think this project doesn't have a lot of shape. Um, so I'd like, a, you know, a senior engineer to kind of look at it with me before we scope it out or share it with more stakeholders. And that's always been a good strategy for me. Yeah, it's really sharp. And you know, you have to assume that you're gonna get asked by the engineering manager about like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about having this person work on this project. What do you think? And you know, you, you should probably just, it's good to have a good gauge of that because that sort of thing is probably gonna come up. And um, it's just kind of good to, uh, good to be aware, good to be thinking about that. Um, Sometimes it can help an engineering engineering manager out. Sometimes you just do more harm than good, but yeah. <laughs> you know, you, it's good good to develop that judgment. Yeah. It. Yeah, there's like there's kind of fine line, right? Like you don't want to like step on the toes of the engineering manager, like, hey, I would really like this person to be on this given their skills and interests. Um, I don't know that I'd be that prescriptive, but I do like to be informed. And then I like to be supportive. You know, a new grad. Like, yeah. let's talk, let me show you like how we can work more effectively or um, at the start of a ceremony, like let's say we're QAing something together, you might give more of an introduction to the problem and the process we're about to take on um, just so they feel more comfortable, right? So that's important. You can also save yourself a lot of breath if you have a lot of senior engineers who do not wanna hear your PMBS every <laughs> single meeting. Um, Come on, we so... don't have any of that. <laughs> I have it's so much of gold. that. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Do not make me read my peer feedback to you. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you don't have to read mine either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next, my favorite, second favorite is to bring everyone along. Um, engineers, mm, I think, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, engineers are like, when the spec is done, let's show it to them. And that's it. <laughs> that is a really good way to tank your project. 
um, the more chances you get to bring people along, even in the, you know, what I call the Play-Doh phase, like where you don't really have anything shaped. It's just like a blob and nothing, but you know, <laughs> you know, that blob's got to become something pretty critical <laughs> um, is to bring engineers you trust along. Um, they may even be outside of your team, but getting an advocate that's in the engineering org um, can help you shape uh, your, not only like, is this reasonable? Um, do you agree with this? But um, in meetings and in sessions, if you have um, these supporters with you, they can help answer questions that you might not know because they've already had eyes on it and thought about it. Yeah. So, so it gives you the chance to like minimize surprises if everyone is kind of in the know um, and also maximize opportunities. Because as we mentioned earlier, um, it's not, you're not a team of one. There's no I in team, y'all. <laughs> you got. <it. laughs> oh, you dropped a y'all. Look at you. You did. I know it. your Texas is rubbing off on me. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I like that. I like it when people are excited because they already have the information, um, and then that kind of like gets everybody aligned around like why we're doing things. Like they agree that it's a problem. Plus, you look a lot smarter if you've pressure tested your ideas with engineering before you go and present in a wider forum. And, you know, that that type of uh, that that method is so great that you mentioned of just like being able to share things when they're early, they haven't they haven't been completely baked. Maybe you're embarrassed about them. Mm -hmm. um, I can't play it, man. It. Yeah, Plato phase. That's a great term. I'm totally going to steal that. Um, the just that that phase where uh, it's super early. Maybe it's a little embarrassing because things aren't completely figured out. Um, mm -hmm. But that can spark ideas or just get people ex excited, like you were saying. That sort of stuff, man. Just really, it really helps. Even if it's just non-product things, non-design things, um, it really just kind of helps engineering get fired up to see like marketing campaigns that are based on their work or you know, um, data science where you, where the insights are showing you that you're on the right track, like the oh, yeah. things that they aren't completely baked, uh, yet, but, but give you those hints in advance, like that sort of stuff really just, you know, not only gets everybody fired up, but just kind of helps get people's ideas flowing, get things pointed in the right direction. And people are, are, are just feeling like it's the right thing to do. They're ready to do yeah. it instead of you having to sit there and be like, Guys, we have to do this because X, Y, Z. I know. Like, oh, I mean, isn't that such a Who drag? Who likes that meeting? It's such know. a drag. Nobody. Um, emotional I alignment, want, guys. I don't want to do it. No. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> you, you got, yeah. You want people to have the same energy you have. And if your energy is off, like, for example, you didn't think through something, like, you also don't want to be caught off guard. So you want to feel confident collectively. Um, so yeah. get, use those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Build partnerships. Friendships, should I even say. Oh, with your goodness. engineers, um, just uh, just to get things, <laughs> get things off in the right in the right direction. Okay, All last right, point. Last one. Yep. So, like any good relationship, there is always a give and a take, and you know we as PMs, I think, are heavy on the taking side, um, but there are things we could do to be better on the giving side. And and one strategy I've used is to understand the broader goals um, of the engineering org. So the you know your engineers have engineering managers and they too have organizations and goals of their own outside of your egotistical feature, PMs. And um, sometimes you, if you know those, you can incorporate that into your feature, in, into your build. So like, Sometimes engineering managers I've worked with have a goal for their engineers to acquire a new set of skills, work on a new stack, use a new technology. And if you know that, you can have those discussions early on to say like, hey, what can we do in order to help these engineers acquire this broader goal? I mean, have you ever done that, Ajay? Like, have you ever gotten Yeah, it's early? reminding me of a project that we... Yeah, totally, totally. There's, there's a project we did um, where, you know, at first, when I started hearing that we needed to move to this new technology stack, I was like, mm, okay, I'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> I've learned through it through the years. And, and this was, you know, more recent. So through those learnings, I was like, mm, I'm going to keep an eye on it. And, um, and then let's see, let's see how things shape out if, if it's something that's, that's really going to help us in some way. And then as, as things started 
moving and I started digging deeper into the current state of the technology stack, um, it made more sense to me that like, oh, okay, investing in this new technology stack is really going to help us be a lot faster because one of our core problems right now is that, you know, the page that we were working on at the time had two different technology stacks yeah. and a lot of bugs would come across um, or development time would be double what we thought it would be because oh, the double? building across the, my God. yeah, double tri I mean, double what? was sometimes generous. It was like triple. Oh my goodness. Um, because you had to like, you know, these two technology stacks had to work together. And so there was like connective tissue between it. And if you built something on one side of the technology stack and, and doing, didn't build that connective tissue, right. Or build on the other side properly, it would, it would, you know, you'd have a lot of bugs or it would just fall apart and they'd have to revisit it or whatever. So it just yeah. created a lot of churn and time and whatever. And so we, we knew that we were going to have a big project on that page here pretty soon at some point. So uh, making that investment in getting everything on one architecture really made a lot of sense to do given the kinds of problems that we were having. And it really set us up for success ultimately when we wanted to redo that page Redoing that page took weeks instead of months. Um, wow, easily that sounds like a uh, win-win. Yeah, win I and mean, you do have to like, if you can understand those goals, understand, you know, spend the time understanding with engineering, like what exactly it is that they're, uh, that the, those goals are capturing and trying to achieve, man, it can really help you uh, when you really need it. Like when you yeah. really need to think about like, oh yeah, our architectures are messed up. And if we get everything on one architecture, we can move a lot faster and all of my dumb features can make it out on time. Right, uh, right. Okay, all right, okay, I'm in, I'm in. Let's do it, let's do it. And <laughs> instead of just dismissing it outright because you want to run a bunch of A-B tests, that's all valuable too. I'm not saying it's not, but mm -hmm. you know, understanding where those things are and, and keeping your feelers out there really, really help you, uh, help you down the line. So it's, it's totally worth it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I guess now we could hit a quick recap since we got all our points across. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, recap. Engineers don't work for you. You work as a team. And given that, you should brainstorm as a team. You don't have to be the only one with good ideas, so keep that in mind. Be data-informed. There's a reason we use data-informed and not data-driven. Data-driven makes it feel like you're just, you know, everything is based on whatever data you saw. It's yeah. more about having that data to inform your decision making and bringing that to the table, communicating that with your team and working working with them on that. Filling fill in the gaps. You know, if there's a need, just jump in, fill it. Roll you up those sleeves. Till, yeah, roll up your sleeves. You got to stay up till 10 p.m. doing translations for a week. Do it. That is that is why you're here. So uh, it it's really going to help out your engineering team. Learn engineering. Learn different technologies, different stacks, how to write code. Checking, checking some code sometime. Um, it might take you 10 times longer than an engineer, but it's totally worth it. So it's time well spent. And, uh, oh, uh, I'm going to keep going. Sorry. Yeah, keep going. All right. You want... Uh, uh, we're not professionals. <laughs> we're not professionals. Okay. We don't know what we're doing. We, we're getting better. Okay. This is number two. This is number two. All right. Era, era. Here we go. Here we go. What, what about... This? Yeah, do it. Let's go. Okay. Uh, learn the stack. Um, there is, it's really easy to hit a quick Google search when you hear a term or a platform name you don't know. Um, it will go far, even just understanding what the core competencies are of that technology. Lots of good resources out there. I mean, you could, I said Google, you could quickly YouTube, just read the banner page. Next point is to understand the level of the engineers on your team so you can plan effectively. Um, then bring those people and their levels along with you to minimize surprises and maximize opportunities. Again, you want to drive emotional alignment, not only program alignment, um, so sharing is caring. And lastly, understand the engineering org's broader goals um, so you can incorporate those goals um, early on in your process, it could pan out that it helps you. It also, again, um, is better for your relationship with engineers because you give them the opportunity to hit some of their 
objectives uh, while delivering on, on this feature. And that's All right. It. And that's that's the key. That's the key for working with engineers. Thanks for joining us for episode two, everybody. Um, make sure you follow the podcast. Smash that like button. Smash it. <laughs> Dream fulfilled. I finally got to say that. Smash that like <laughs> button. Leave a leave a comment. Uh, if you'd like to learn something else uh, about engineers or working with engineering or just engineering in general or anything else. Leave us comments. Uh, they're great episode ideas or, or just great things for us to respond to in the podcast. And, or what and we should so drink much, everybody. next. Oh, and thank what you. you should drink next. Oh, yeah, my yeah. gosh. You definitely need to leave that down in the comments. Yeah. Yes, what we should and, drink uh, next. And follow us on TikTok, Instagram. Oh, definitely. Def I'm totally bought in for that. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Thanks for joining us in the Product Happy Hour. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.